Hello, welcome to Vedil Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see carbohydrates part 2 of uh, UGTRB syllabus. In the carbohydrates, we have already finished the first part. Uh, in this video, we will take up muta rotation and then also we will study about the structure of the disaccharides and then we will see how they are connected to each other and how uh, we classify them. So, in, there are four questions from earlier question papers, TRB question papers or TNPSC question papers and all these four questions are on different topics. Uh, the first question is on alpha and beta D glucose. The second question is on muta rotation. The third question is on the molecular formula. The fourth question is on um, reducing and non-reducing nature of the carbohydrates. So, all these questions we will answer them at the end of this video presentation. First, we will learn the basics to understand what these terms are and then we will go into the questions. So, first and foremost, in the previous video, we saw only the open chain structure of carbohydrates. Now, in this video, we are going to see uh, the carbohydrates are not only having an open chain, but they are also having a cyclic structure. We would want to know how a carbohydrate, this is the structure of glucose, is able to exist in a cyclic form. So, these are the ways or representation in which we will see in our textbooks, a big uh, box and then an oxygen in between another six membered ring. So, these are all the popular ways in which the structures are written. Now, we will learn about how or how to differentiate between an open chain and a cyclic structure and how carbohydrates are forming these cyclic structures is what we will see next. So, this is nothing but a hemiacetal. So, if you have, if you could recollect uh, the reaction of aldehydes and ketones with alcohols, aldehydes and ketones can react with alcohols to form hemiacetals. So, this is a hemiacetal and ketones can form hemiketals. So, how is this forming? This is actually a simple nucleophilic addition reaction. So, I have, for instance, uh, let us take an example of an aldehyde group and the aldehyde group reacts with an alcoholic group. So, alcohol is another R dash and whenever we are saying nucleophilic addition, it is RO minus and H plus and then the negative part will add to the carbon atom and then the positive part will add to the hydrogen atom. And as a result, we see an adduct or a nucleophilic addition product of this particular reaction happens. So, you get a O and the hydrogen of the alcohol adds to the oxygen of the carbonyl group. Then, the hydrogen with the aldehyde remains and the new bond between the alkoxy group and carbon atom is formed. So, this is actually the hemiacetal. So, this is a characteristic reaction of an aldehyde and an alcohol and uh, uh, in chemistry you would have also studied another extra alcohol group can react with this already formed hemiacetal to form acetal wherein this OH will also become OR. Actually, it is a diether. Here it is an ether on one side and a hydroxy group on the other side. So, now going to the um, carbohydrates. So, this is glucose and glucose is having an aldehyde group and many hydroxy groups. So, these carbohydrates has the capacity to form hemiacetals and we always know uh, that uh, five membered and six membered ring are preferred when compared to smaller rings or bigger rings as for the ba Bayer strain theory. So, here in this case also if you see uh, the aldehyde carbon is carbon 1 and then when we subsequently number the other carbon atoms, we see carbon 5 and carbon 1 can form a cyclic ring system wherein the OH of the fifth carbon and the first carbon can react to form the um, hemiacetal. So, the OH uh, uh, will uh, react and uh, you, uh, what we see here is as I have shown in the representation, the hydrogen of the OH will go to the carbon carbonyl oxygen and the double bond will become a single bond and then will bond to the oxygen of the fifth carbon atom. That is how we get that you know oxygen going in between the fifth carbon and the first carbon. So, because it is already five membered and oxygen becomes the six membered, 
this is actually a six membered ring kind of a system wherein you are having the first and the fifth carbon being in the cyclic chain so the sixth carbon is actually outside ch2oh is outside so because this is actually a cyclic six membered ring this is lo looking like a pyran so that is why in carbohydrate chemistry these are given the name oath okay pyranose if there is a six membered ring uh, the ring systems are called as pyranose so now let us see the cyclic structure of glucose so as i showed you glucose is having uh, a aldehyde and an alcoholic group so what could happen is as i told you this fifth carbon had the oh and this oxygen can bond from either on to the right or to the left that is the aldehyde group on the carbon atom this aldehyde group on the carbon atom in this case it is on the right hand side the same way the carbonyl group can be on the left hand side so if the carbonyl is on the left hand side then you will land up getting an oh on the left hand side if because it is on the right hand side then you get a aldehyde becoming an oh on the right hand side in other words uh, the aldehyde carbon is becoming a hydroxyl carbon and a new carbon oxygen bond is formed so the carbon 1 which was earlier a achiral carbon becomes a chiral center so we see this is having four different groups attached to it so this is a very important thing because of this kind of chemistry that is happening to a carbohydrate glucose which was having a straight chain is becoming cyclic because of hemiacetal formation but that cyclic glucose is not one glucose but there are two different glucoses so so far what we have been saying is d glucose is not one glucose it is actually alpha d glucose or beta d glucose because both of them are two different compounds so their chemistries are different the, the way the, their structures are there are different so these two glucoses are two different glucose so we see glucose results in a six membered ring and this six membered ring is represented like this and you will be wondering how these OH are written so it is a very simple way of doing it we will see in the next slides so now <coughs> let us see the terminologies and structures that are used to represent carbohydrates so this is the open chain structure and this is also called as fisher's product projection because emil fisher was the one who actually uh, demonstrated the use of this particular structure open chain structure and in open chain structure itself or in fisher's projection itself we put the hemiacetal and that is how we saw in the first slide but actually uh, these are the two other popular representations of carbohydrates one is the Harvard's projection the other one is the chair conformer we all must know whenever there is a six membered ring system it is all actually a chair cyclohexane because i told you before itself that uh, carbohydrates are aliphatic compounds so because it is an aliphatic six membered ring definitely it is a cyclohexane kind of a ring and that is why um, it exists in a char conformer so this char conformer is a stable conformer and then we have groups above and below the chain so Harvard gave a simple representation of putting a six membered ring like a hexagon but actually this is the real structure or actual structure of the glucose but then how a structure can be used uh, interchangeably to understand the chemistry so if an Harvard structure is given how do I recognize the glucose moiety is it alpha glucose or is it beta glucose so always remember in a Harvard's representation OH is always written on the top so either you put the OH on top or at the bottom so when we draw the six membered representation of Harvard structure the oxygen is put at the back and then the newly formed chiral carbon the newly formed chiral carbon is written on the right so this is the newly formed so the OH can be written either on top like this or 
I write another structure again how it's representation and the OH can be written at the bottom. So all other re representations are uh, at all other compounds there is no chain it's going to be the same. So the only change is going to be at this chiral center. So either the OH will be down or the OH will be top. So if the OH is on top then we say it is a beta glucose. If the OH is written down we write it is alpha glucose. And always remember in case of glucose molecule all the OH are you know written opposite to each other. So there are two bonds on all carbons and leaving out the first carbon if you start from the second carbon the OHs are alternatively written. That is all. This is how we write the structure. So, in case of Howard's representation, we see the CH2 and OH on the same direction. If it, then it is beta. And in case of alpha, again, there is no other change. It all other groups are going to be the same way. So, down, up, down, and up. So all other positions are going to be the same. Only the alpha carbon is going to be different or the carbon where the new bond is formed is going to be different. So if it is having the OH on the top, then it is called as beta. If it is having the OH at the bottom, then it is called as alpha glucose. But then we know six membered ring chair conformer is the preferred conformer. So in the chair conformer, whenever we have molecules return or cyclohexane ring return in the chair conformer we know there are two different bonds one is called as the axial bond another one is called as the equatorial bond all bonds of cyclohexane can either be called as equatorial and axial axial is all vertical straight line bonds are called as axial bonds the bonds that are in the equatorial positions are called as uh, or slanting positions are called as equatorial bonds. So that is the difference. So in case of glucose moiety, it is very, very easy. Always remember in case of beta D glucose, the OH is always in the equatorial position, all OH, all the OH including the one which is in the chiral carbon or the newly formed o carbon OH is also uh, will be in the equatorial position. So you check up and see all cases in all the positions the OH will be in the equatorial position. This is written uh, straight but actually this is equatorial. The here also the OH is in equatorial position. Only in beta D glucose even the bulky group CH2 group is also in the equatorial position. So in beta D glucose, all the bulky groups or the OH groups are in the equatorial position. And that is why between alpha D glucose and beta D glucose, beta D glucose is a stabler form, stable when compared to alpha. Why? One in alpha, all other places will be equatorial, but the axial uh, group will have the OH group. That is the difference. So now let us see the comparison. So this is a better way to look at the structure. So here we have the OH on top and in equatorial position all groups are in equatorial. So in, if it is alpha D glucose we will have this OH coming to the axial position and hydrogen coming here then it will become alpha D glucose. So between alpha D and beta D, alpha D glucose is the stabler form of glucose. Why beta D glucose is stabler form? Because all bulky groups are in equatorial position in beta D glucose. Now coming to structure of fructose. So again fructose is a ketose. So this a ketone can also undergo hemiacetal formation. A similar hemiacetal formation with fructose results in a five membered ring. So factors preferably forms a five membered ring because uh, CH2OH group 
uh, is um, uh, a primary alcohol and then the reaction may not give you a stabler product. So, uh, you get a 5 member ring. Again, here we should see the chiral, um, you see here, this is one group, this is another group. So, the blue and uh, green are differentiated. So, this is the newly formed OH group. So, this is also a hemiketal. So, in case of uh, fructose, we have a hemiketal. Then next, uh, we go to another sugar which is called as D-ribose because I told you ribose is part of the um, DNA. So, this is actually one nucleotide unit wherein we have sugar, phosphate and a base. This is nucleotide and the chain increases. So, the primary sugar unit that is present in, uh, this is not DNA, this is RNA because OH is present, this is ribose sugar. DNA has deoxyribose in the sense, here it is not OH, it is hydrogen. So, now coming to ribose, again, though it is a 5-membered ring, again, uh, it will, uh, sorry, 5-carbon compound, again, we will see a reaction happening between the 1st carbon and the 4th carbon and as a result, a 5-membered ring will be formed. So, in, in this case also, so all sugars, okay, they will either form 5-membered ring or 6 member ring to form hemiacetals. That is an important thing. So, here also we see ribose sugar is forming a hemiacetal. So, next we will see the names or relationship. What are they called? How do I relate to them? So, by means of stereochemistry, we know very well that a newly formed chiral carbon results in another stereoisomer. So, this two isomers, alpha D glucose and beta D glucose are called as anomers and the carbon is called as the anomeric carbon. So, this carbon where a newly chiral formed, sorry, newly, newly formed chiral center is present, it is called as a anomeric carbon and uh, because it is a six membered ring, we use the notation pyranose. So, these two carbohydrates are called as anomers. So, now coming to disaccharides. So, again to differentiate between carbohydrates, the color differences are there. So, this is a six membered ring. You see this is glucose and uh, this is fr fructose and uh, so this is an example of a disaccharide and in this disaccharide, you know uh, glucose OH is down, okay. The OH was down. So, this is a alpha glucose unit and then we have uh, fructose also. Fructose also you know pretty well it is an alpha uh, it is an alpha glucose unit. So, uh, this sucrose is joined together at, a, at this particular position to form a disaccharide. So, sucrose is a disaccharide containing glucose and fructose unit. Now, the next is maltose. Maltose is a combination of two glucose units. Again, you see here OH is down. Here also the OH is down. So, maltose is made of two alpha D glucose units. So, this is one. Uh, so, when uh, this is one glucose unit, this is another glucose unit. So, the bond between the first. So, the, uh, the numbering is this is the first carbon. Okay. So, this is the first carbon. So, second carbon, third carbon fourth carbon, fifth and then, then this is sixth. So, likewise when we number the carbon atom, we see in case of uh, um, maltose, the bonding is between the first carbon and the fourth carbon atom. Okay. So, this such a kind of bond wherein actually what happened was here the, the OH was present here and uh, on the other side also there was OH. So, water was removed and then you land up getting a glycosidic linkages. So, this linkage is called as glycosidic linkage. So, this glycosidic linkage is formed, it is an oxygen-oxygen linkage where water is removed. It is a condensation reaction. Okay. So, when two monosaccharide units combine with the removal of water molecule, then it forms a glycoside. So, this glycosidic linkage 
is between the first and the fourth carbon atom so there is the it is prefixed before the name 1 comma 4 glycosidic linkage so in uh, maltose is a combination of 1 comma 4 glycosidic linkage so now coming to the next so in case of the uh, uh, fructose you just name it so again it is one on this side again fructose it becomes one two three four five and six so you know oxygen is on was on the second carbon atom and because it was a ketone and then uh, uh, the ch2 group was on top which formed on both sides so now let's see the next one in case of lactose it is a combination of galactose and glucose so this is uh, the what is in orange is galactose so what is different between galactose and glucose galactose and glucose are epimers if you recollect they are epimers so what is the epi uh, what epimers are they are they c2 epimers or c4 epimers so they, those epimers when they are forming a cyclic system uh, again you see this is the first carbon and again here the uh, glucose is here glucose is 1 2 3 and 4 this is galactose 2 3 4 5 so when you see the structure of glucose so uh, on carbon 2 the configuration is the same on carbon 3 the carbon configuration is same so carbon 4 only we see the configuration is different for galactose and glucose so it is a c4 epimer and the oh is on top for galactose in case of glucose the oh is at the bottom see here the oh the fourth oh is at the bottom so the but then galactose also will form hemiacetal and this hemiacetal resulted in the oh on top in a sense it's a beta galactose so the linkage is between the first carbon of galactose and the fourth carbon of glucose so this is also a 1 comma 4 glycosidic linkage and in this linkage the hemiacetal of galactose is involved in the glycosidic linkage like in this case also in case of alpha glucose in sucrose also the hemiacetal is involved in the glycose it's not free okay whereas in case of uh, maltose one of the glucose is having its hemiacetal locked whereas the other glucose has its hemiacetal open so this anomeric carbon this is the anomeric carbon one is the anomeric carbon anomeric carbon so this carbon is free so uh, that is one of the important things that we must remember so in the structures of the disaccharides what i want you to remember is in case of maltose the anomeric carbon of one of the glucose has its oh free it is not involved in glycosidic linkage likewise in case of lactose so in we see lactose also the oh of lactose the anomeric OH of lactose is also non, not involved in the carbon uh, not involved in glycosidic linkage. Only galactose and uh, you know anomeric carbon so OH is involved in glycosidic linkage. Okay, so this is something which we must remember. Between the two sugar units, one of them have their um, sorry have their hemiacetal carbon or hemiacetal group free it is not involved in glycosidic linkage okay whereas in case of sucrose it is actually forming a bond here okay so fructose is a newly formed OH group here so that is locked in glycosidic linkage so between the three disaccharide units that we have here only in sucrose the glycosidic linkage is uh, uh, blocking both the anomeric carbons or the newly formed carbon so this is all this is also an anomeric carbon this is also an anomeric carbon so this is the thing that we must remember so let us see each of them this is what i was saying so here the alpha anomeric carbon is free and this linkage is called as 
beta 1 2 because it is uh, involving beta uh, uh, sugar okay and then coming to so it results in form uh, the it hydrolyzes to galactose and glucose likewise in case of uh, sucrose sucrose hydrolyzes to alpha d glucose and beta d fructose so this is the in, uh, newly formed so this is where uh, the sugar unit of sucrose is uh, being locked so both the asterisks are newly formed hemiacetals or ketal here it is ketal here it is hemiacetal so in both these places the newly formed oh is were there and they reacted and formed water so this linkage between uh, glucose and fructose results in sucrose where the newly formed hemiacetal is not free it is locked in the glycosidic linkage please remember this this is the most important property of sucrose so what is sucrose most important property of sucrose that the newly formed anomeric carbons have their oh groups locked in glycosidic linkage and because it is locked in glycosidic linkage it cannot undergo hydro it cannot break down that easily or it, uh, it cannot open or close so we'll go to understanding that later so again here gentibios is another uh, disaccharide which is formed when uh, uh, glucose is burned or when starch is hydrolyzed uh, it is a bitter sugar and this sugar also is a disaccharide but what we must see here is it is the reaction between uh, the OH here and the CH2OH okay so the reaction is happening here okay so this is between the first carbon and the sixth carbon because we know when we start numbering glucose we know it, we number from the first aldehyde carbon so because this linkage glycosidic linkage is between the first carbon and the sixth carbon this is called as beta 1 comma 6 glycosidic linkage because these linkages are also popular in polysaccharides or branching in polysaccharides um, hydrolysis of polysaccharides results in this disaccharide too so this disaccharide is popularly uh, known uh, or in hydrolysis of starch but if we are seeing the anomeric carbon we see as in case of lactose as in case of maltose one of the glucose units is not having its oh group disturbed it is not involved in any reaction it is free so this is also an important point to remember so now let's go to the next so what is this freeness of oh leading to we have seen that open chain glucose forms can form alpha d glucose and beta d glucose this alpha d glucose is a different molecule beta d glucose is also a different molecule when alpha d glucose is dissolved in water it was found that its specific rotation changed when i am talking about specific rotation we all know this all these carbohydrates are optically active in the sense they will re rotate the plane polarized light they have their characteristic property to rotate plane polarized light so now why are we saying alpha d glucose and beta d glucose because each of them have their own characteristic specific rotation so what was seen was when i when someone dissolved alpha d glucose it slowly equilibrated to the specific rotation of open chain glucose similarly when beta d glucose was taken and when it was dissolved in water it slowly equilibrated to open chain in the sense the specific rotation changed from 
beta d glucose's value to the open chain value or the equilibrium value so this phenomenon of a carbohydrate to open up its hemiacetal so what is happening here this hemiacetal is opening earlier what we said this is forming an hemiacetal now what we are saying when water is added this chain is opening up and becomes an open chain so this property of a carbohydrate is very 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 important why i say very very important is many of the chemical properties of carbohydrates are dependent on this chemistry so because this hemiacetal can open up this carbohydrates now when they are in the cyclic system they all look like alcohols but they can also undergo reactions wherein an aldehyde can be oxidized to an acid so this property of an aldehyde being oxidized to an acid is possible because these ring structure of carbohydrates can slowly open when they are dissolved in water so they are not uh, such, they just open up the ring chain ring opens up to a straight chain and the straight chain undergoes reaction so this forms the basis for reduction reaction or uh, oxidizing oxidation reaction we would have heard about tollens reagents felling reagent so tollens and fellings reagents are uh, are characteristic reactions to find whether a carbohydrate is a reducing sugar or a non reducing sugar so both these reagents are able to undergo reaction only because of this characteristic property of carbohydrate so what is muta rotation muta rotation is nothing but the ability of the cyclic carbohydrate to equilibrate to its open chain structure is called as muta rotation so now let us see the muta rotation in glucose so as i told you alpha d glucose and beta d glucose both of them will equilibrate to the open chain so the specific rotation of open chain glucose is 52 plus 52.7 okay so alpha d is 112 so when it is dissolved in water it will slowly become 52.7 likewise beta d glucose when dissolved in water will slowly change from 18.7 to 15 22.7 so at equilibrium as i told you already beta d glucose is the stabler form of glucose so at equilibrium the majority of the glucose unit is in the beta form that is why it is 63% whereas alpha is 37% so i have put the uh, char conformer also so that we can connect between the two uh, howard structure fisher structure then uh, the char conformation so as i told you reducing sugars versus non reducing sugars so uh, generally in chemistry when someone is asking a question what is a reducing sugar and what is a non reducing sugar the common answer students give us reducing sugars will reduce tollens reagent non reducing sugars will not reduce tollens reagent actually that is not the way to answer the question a reducing sugar is one where the hemiacetal is free okay is not locked in any other compound or locked in the formation of any other product like here in case of sucrose whereas whenever the heavy acetal is not locked or is not involved in any glycosidic linkage hydrolysis reaction with water will lead to opening of the chain and the open chain becomes an aldehyde and this aldehyde can undergo reaction with mild oxidizing agents such as tollens reagent to form you know the carboxylic acid and then the tollens reagent by itself will get reduced so those reactions of tollens reagent we can see in other slides but here what we must remember a reducing sugar is one which has its semi acetal free so that uh, on hydro uh, on uh, on dissolution it can open into an open chain and can undergo reaction so mannose galactose dentybiose all the disaccharides 
whichever is ha having their OH group, that is the car anomeric carbon, carbons OH group free, will be reducing sugars. Whereas if both the anomeric carbons are involved in the formation of uh, a glycosidic linkage, then the sugar is called as a non-reducing sugar. So please remember sucrose which is formed by the combination of glucose and fructose is a non-reducing sugar. All other sugars are reducing sugars. So now let's go back to the question. So the first question was alpha and beta glucose differ in orientation of the OH group at carbon. So which was the carbon that became the uh, chiral carbon? So that was carbon 1. So this is where we had the OH group, whether the OH is in top or whether the OH is at the bottom. So this is carbon 1. So that carbon is also called as the anomeric carbon. And this carbon is a newly formed chiral carbon. And so the beta and alpha D glucoses, glucose are two different compounds with two different uh, specific rotations, melting points and also they are called as diastereomers. So in this case, the answer is A, C1. Now the next question, muta rotation does not occur. So again, muta rotation is possible only in case of hemiacetal, free hemiacetal. Please remember that is this again, the anomeric carbons OH is free. It is not involved in glycosidic linkage. So all the monosaccharides, all the monosaccharides are having the capacity to muta rotate because they can... Uh, equilibrate between the ring structure and the cyclic structure. So in case of disaccharide, only sucrose cannot muta rotate. Why sucrose cannot muta rotate? Because both the anomeric carbons are the ones which are involved in the glycosidic linkage. And so sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. It cannot break that bond. It cannot equilibrate to the open chain. So that is why sucrose cannot undergo muta rotation. And then coming to general formula of disaccharides. So as I told you, it's a condensation reaction. So one molecule of water alone is removed. So we all know from uh, the formula of carbohydrates, the general formula is CNH2O N times. So if we are saying one water molecule is removed, it is just the case where n minus 1 is right. That is all. It's quite straightforward. Okay. So a disaccharide has how many glycosidic linkage? It has one glycosidic linkage. So whether it is uh, gentobiose or it is sucrose or lactose or maltose, there will be only one glycosidic linkage or only one water molecule would have been removed. So that is why we have the general formula as CnH2O n minus 1. Now the next final question, which among the following is non-reducing? So as I told you in the, in the previous uh, explanation itself, all monosaccharides, if they are having their hemiacetal free, that is if they can equilibrate between open chain and cyclic ring system, if they exist in aldehyde form, then they have the property to form reducing sugars, okay. So here fructose is also given because it can equilibrate to glucose. So it will uh, under conditions, strong conditions, it can undergo also reaction with Tolson's reagent. That is why it is put here. So the non-reducing sugar in this list is sucrose. So the answer is sucrose. So I hope you all understood. Thank you.